Hello, uh, welcome back to the class. Let us take one more example. This is regarding the design of cantilever section. The problem goes like this. A cantilever beam of 4 meter span, 4 meter span carries a load of a load of 20 kilo Newton per meter this is factor load the width of the beam is 230 millimeter design the beam for flexure and shear and shear sketch the details Sketch the details of reinforcement. Use M20 concrete and FE415. Steel. Solution. So, determination of dimensions determination of dimensions To calculate design bending moment MUD to check the adequacy of depth. to calculate the area of tension steel AST to check for shear to check for deflection and reinforcement details. See this is from one of the examinations. Okay. A cantilever beam of 4 meter length carried a load of 20 kilo Newton per meter that is factored load ok and you do not have to multiply this value by 1.5 to arrive at the design load no it is not required because it is already multiplied. So the width of the beam is 230 millimeter so the width of the beam is fixed 
So design the beam for flexure and shear. The problem says design the beam for flexure and shear you don't have to check for deflection. However, in this problem I am going to do this, this step as well to check for deflection for sake of completeness. Okay, but if in the examination, so if the problem is like this, you don't have to check for deflection. So sketch the details of reinforcement, use M20 concrete and FE 415 steel. So what is the first step? Determination of dimensions. See, if you open page number 37 under 23.2.1 for cantilever, L by D ratio should not be greater than 7. Is it not? So, by making use of that formula without giving any corrections, so I am going to find out what is the depth required. That is, what is the thickness of the cantilever required? So, the cantilever goes like this. This is fixed. Okay. So, so as per 23.2.1 page 37, L by D ratio should not be greater than 7. So we are fixing the depth approximately. Okay. So then we are going to go back and check whether the fixed depth is okay or not. This is nothing but L by D should be less than equal to 7 or what is L? 4 meter that is 4 multiplied by 1000. D is we don't know 7 therefore D equal to so 570 millimeter that is the effective depth. So let us use 20 millimeter diameter bars 8 mm diastirups. Eight mm diastirups, and by assuming mild exposure of concrete to the weather, we can take twenty mm as clear cover. So once we do that, if we take a section here where we get the highest thickness of the beam. Sorry, cantilever we are going to provide reinforcement at the top. This is D. So, this is going to be 20 plus 8 plus 20 by 2, that is the effective cover. Okay. Okay. Therefore, total depth equal to 570 plus effective cover. Effective cover that is equal to 570 plus clear cover plus 8 mm diameter stirrups plus half the diameter of the main bar. So, that is equal to so, 38608 millimeter. Here I am not going to go for higher number because still this is still approximate. Okay. So, I am going to use 600 millimeter overall depth cantilever section. Okay. Therefore, let us use. 230 millimeter 
by 600 millimeter section at the support end at the support end okay therefore actual effective depth provided provided equal to 600 minus 20 plus 8 plus 28 by 2 that is equal to 562 millimeter okay so if you look here i have written let us <coughs> excuse me let us use 230 millimeter by 600 millimeter at the support end what it means is because we get maximum bending moment at the fixed support for a cantilever so we are going to give that overall thickness of 600 millimeter at the support as we go towards the free end the bending moment reduces as a result we can decrease the thickness so theoretically speaking we need zero thickness at this end however for practical reasons we are going to give certain thickness at the free end so let us give 200 millimeter thickness at the free end so it is going to be like this okay so this is 200 millimeter and this is total depth that is equal to 600 millimeter okay so in the problem it is given the width of the cantilever beam as 230 millimeter so if i take a section exactly here so i'm going to see the section like this that is 230 millimeter and this is 200 millimeter section so i'm going to call this as section a a a so this is section a a So if I take a section here at this support, so I'm going to call this as section BB. Okay, the section will look like this. That is 230 millimeter and this is 600 millimeter okay, this is section BB okay so determination of dimensions now the dimensions are fixed okay what is the next step to calculate design bending moment MUD design bending moment m u d see if you look here 20 kilo newton per meter factored so we are going to take that load as imposed load or live load therefore imposed load or factored live load factored live load equal to 20 kilo newton per meter this is given 
So for this load, I need to add the self weight of the cantilever. Okay. So if I take a section here, so the area of cross section will be 230 millimeter by 200 millimeter. So what is the unit weight or just what is the UDL at that section? So that is weight, self weight. of the beam that is cantilever beam at the free end at the free end equal to 0 0.23 multiplied by 0 0.2 multiplied okay I'm going to add one more step area of cross section multiplied by unit weight of RC that is reinforced concrete. So what is the area of cross section in terms of meter? That is 0.23 multiplied by 0 0.2, 0 0.23 multiplied by 0 0.2 and unit weight of concrete is 25 kilonewton per meter cube that is 1.15 kilonewton per meter. Okay. And the next step is weight of the beam that is the self weight of the cantilever beam of the beam at the fixed end equal to at the fixed end equal to area of cross section that is 0 0.23 multiplied by the depth multiplied by the unit weight of concrete that is equal to 3.45 kilonewton per meter okay so these two are the loads these are the service loads so what we need is the design load therefore design load at the free end equal to 1.5 times that is the load factor multiplied by 1.15 that is equal to 1.725 kilonewton per meter and design load at the fixed end at the fixed end that is 1.5 multiplied by this is 3.45 that is equal to 5.175 5.175 kilo newton per meter okay so if I show the load variation diagram for a design load. So it is going to be twenty kilo newton per meter. That is a live load. So if I take the self weight so the load is going to be like this okay so this is 5.175 kilo newton per meter and at the free end it is going to be 1.725 kilo newton meter okay so i am going to divide this figure into a rectangle and a triangle so the load is going to be like this
Okay. So what is this value? So this value is going to be 5.175 minus of 1.725. Okay, that is the value here. So it is 175, 4. Point five five. Kilo Newton per meter. Okay. So this is nothing but the UDL. So self weight is going to be this much of UDL and this much of triangular load. Okay. What is the next step? We need to find out what is the design bending moment? We have the design load, design live load and we have the design dead load. So we are going to find out what is the design bending moment MUD. Maximum bending moment occurs at the fixed end at the fixed end. This is the fixed end. So I am going to take moments of all the forces about this. Okay? And I am going to add those values. Therefore, the fixed end is M U D that is equal to 20 multiplied by 4 is the total load acting at a distance of 4 by 2 that is the position of the resultant of this force it is exactly in the middle okay so if I take this again this is one more UDL plus 1.725 multiplied by 4 acting at a distance of 4 by 2 plus triangular load this is the triangular load that is 5.175 minus 1.725 that is 4.550 okay multiplied by this 4 multiplied by because this is a triangular load so the resulting force will be acting at a distance of L by 3 that is 4 by 3 ok so therefore M U D equal to 183.183 kilo Newton meter This is the design bending moment. Okay. Next step is to check the adequacy of depth. See, we have this load and we fixed the thickness here and also the thickness here. That is the depth we fixed. Okay. And we calculated the bending moment. That is the maximum bending moment. And first thing we need to do is we need to check whether the thickness we have provided is adequate or not. So that is the next step which we are going to take. So to check the adequacy of depth. To check the adequacy of depth. So we have M U limit equal to 0 0.36 X U max by D 1 minus 0 0.42 X U max by D B D square 
B D square multiplied by F C K. Okay. So from page number 70 of the code book, so X U max by D for F E for 15 steel is 0.48. In this place, when we are checking the adequacy of depth, we are going to substitute this value, design bending moment, for MU limit value. Okay? Therefore, by substituting the value of MUD for MU limit, we get so MU limit is 183 multiplied by 10 to the power of 6. I am converting the value into Newton millimeter 0 0.36 multiplied by 0 0.48, 1 minus 0 0.42 multiplied by 0. 4, 8. B is 230 millimeter that is given D square into M20 concrete so it is 20. So after simplification we, therefore we are going to get the value of D equal to 534 millimeter. Okay. So for a balance section so we need the effective depth equal to 534 millimeter. Is it clear? But what is the actual depth provided? The actual depth provided, if you remember, the overall depth D, that is 600 millimeter, minus the effective cover, which was 38 millimeter. So the actual depth we provided was 562 millimeter. So this is the minimum depth required. And this is the depth we provided. Therefore, okay, we have provided the depth more than what is required for a balance section. Okay, and this depth we have provided is greater than a balance section. So once we increase the depth, what happens to the lever arm? Lever arm length increases. After all, moment of resistance is given by total tension or total compression multiplied by the lever arm equal to some design moment. So when you ch don't change the design moment, instead if you increase the lever arm on the left hand side, so the area of steel required will be less. Okay, that gives rise to an under reinforced section. Is it clear to you? Because this is less than this, therefore the section is adequate, adequate and under under reinforced okay so this is over the next step is to calculate the area of tension steel So because the section is under reinforced, to calculate the area of tension steel, the formula we can make use of is 1.1b on page 96 of the code book. So because the section is under reinforced, 
under reinforced we have m u equal to 0.87 f y a s t d 1 minus f y a s t divided by f c k b d okay this is the formula given on page 96 under annexure g 1.1 c Okay, so by substituting the values in the above equation, we get, so for mu value, what is the value you are supposed to substitute? You are supposed to substitute the value of design bending moment. So, what is the design bending moment? That is 183 multiplied by 10 to the power of 6, that is equal to 0 0.87. Fy is 415 multiplied by AST is the area of tension still required. We need to find out. And what is D? Here it is not the depth of a balance section, instead it is the depth we have actually provided. What is the depth we have actually provided? 562 is the depth provided, 1 minus 415 multiplied by AST divided by FCK is 20 concrete, 230 is the width and 560 is 562 is the actual depth we have provided. So on further simplification, on further simplification, we get AST square minus 622 9.45 AST plus 5.75 into 10 to the power of 6 that should be equal to 0. So AX square plus BX plus C formula. Okay. Therefore AST equal to 1127 millimeter square. Okay. So, this is the area required. So, therefore, number of 20 mm dia bars, because we are using 20 millimeter dia bars, equal to 1127 divided by pi by 4, 20 square, that is equal to 3.6, say 4. So, we have provided uh, 4 bars of 20 millimeter diameter bars. So, therefore, actual area of steel provided is AST. equal to 4 bars pi by 4 20 square that is equal to 1256.6 millimeter square that is the actual area of steel provided. So we have to check for AST minimum and AST maximum. So therefore AST minimum equal to 0 0.85 divided by Fy B multiplied by D, 0 0.85415 steel into 230 into 562 is the effective depth that is equal to 265 millimeter square. 
So this is the AST value, actual value we are providing. This is the AST minimum. So we have to provide at least this much. Therefore, AST provided is greater than AST minimum. Okay, therefore, okay. Okay, so now you know from where exactly we got this formula from, from the IS code from the previous example. So I'm not going to go into detail to that part. Similarly, AST max equal to 0 0.04 B capital D. That is equal to 0 0.04 multiplied by 230 and overall depth is 600. That is equal to 5520 millimeter square. This is AST max. Okay. And so AST max is greater than AST provided. Therefore, okay. Okay. So next, the next step is to check for the development length. To check for development length. I am going to explain why we need this in case of cantilever. So we have again I am picking up this formula from the code book. So that is phi sigma s divided by 4 tau bd. Okay. So here phi is the diameter of the bar which is 20 millimeter. Sigma s is 0 0.87 fy that is 0 0.87 415 divided by 4 times tau bd is the bond strength of concrete for m20 so the bond strength between m20 concrete and the mild steel is 1.2 newton per millimeter square as given in the code because we are using 415 steel with 20 mm diameter bars that is a deformed bar so for deformed bars, whatever the value given in the table should be increased by 60%. So that's why 1.2 Newton per millimeter square is the bond, bond strength. So by increasing that value by 60%, I'm going to get this value. That is equal to 940 millimeter is the development length. So again, we need to give correction for this. I'm going to explain. So in case of cantilever, so when we are providing cantilever like this, so this is the support, okay. So when we are providing reinforcements, tension reinforcements like this, so for our case, it is 4 of 20 millimeter diameter and the development length LD should be on this side and also it should be on this side. That means the development length should be like this or if you have a beam like this behind this cantilever, the bar should be bent such that that length is going to be development length. So but in this case, we need to reduce this. The reason is the actual area of steel required is 1127 <coughs> millimeter square but we are providing 1256.6 millimeter square okay as a result we can reduce the development length by that much if you are giving exact value of 1127 millimeter square area for tension steel so you must provide a development length of 940 millimeters. Since we are increasing the area, the surface area of the bar increases. As the surface area of the bar increases, 
So the area of contact of the bar with the surrounding concrete increases. As it increases, we can reduce the development length of the bar by that much. Because development, design development strength or capacity or design bond strength or capacity is given by the length of the development multiplied by the circumference area. Okay. So, therefore, actual development length we need to provide equal to LD multiplied by area of tension steel required divided by area of tension steel tension steel provided okay so here it is 940 area of tension steel required is 1127 that's what the calculation value we got that is 1127 and area of tension steel provided is here 1256.6 so that is equal to 843 millimeter say 850 millimeter okay so what it means is when we are providing reinforcement in case of cantilever the development length on both sides of the support should be equal to 850 millimeter at least so that means 850 millimeter minimum on this side this can be a straight bar or you can just rotate the bar as long as the total length is at least 850 millimeter we are okay and also the development length should be 850 millimeter of course the cantilever length is 4, 4 meter that is greater than 0.85 meter so automatically it will be okay and one more thing which I am not going to do but just do this as a practice so because we are providing four bars on the top so if you take a cross section okay you will see four bars like this okay so in this case under this load the bending moment here will be zero if I draw a bending moment diagram bending moment variation diagram for this so I am going to get the bending moment variation diagram like this for a cantilever okay so what is the bending moment at the free end it is zero so as we move towards the support the bending moment keeps on increasing in other words we get the maximum bending moment here as we move towards the free end the bending moment keeps decreasing so as the bending moment keeps decreasing so at certain point we don't we may not need all four bars so we can cut off these two bars okay so what we need to do is we need to find the distance at which we can cut two bars so how do we do that so if I say this is the section X sorry section at a distance of X from the free end so come here take the moments of all the forces about this axis and equate that value equal to 50% of the design bending moment okay so 50% of the design bending moment yes you have the value MUD take 50% of it equate that 
find out the exact value of x. Once you got the value of x, so at that section we will we'll have the 50% bending moment, 50% of maximum bending moment. So there theoretically you can cut off two bars, theoretically. However, the code says the bar should be extended for a distance equal to 12 times the diameter of the bar or one effective depth at this section whichever is greater okay once you do that so you can find out from what exactly the distance from the support to that point wherein you can cut the bars practically okay so once you know this length that is where to cut the bars that is 50 percent of the bars so that value must be checked against this 850 millimeter what it means is say for example you are cutting the bars at a distance of 1.5 meter from the support that is 1500 millimeter so that's okay the distance is greater than this value what in case you happen to cut the bar actually at a distance of say 750 millimeter from this support. Of course you can cut it if it is a simply supported beam. But in case of cantilever what you must do is you must extend the bar at least for a distance equal to 850 millimeter from this support. Okay that part I am not going to do the calculation. So just you do that as a practice that is cut two bars at a certain distance that is where you have 50 percent and check for this is it clear to you so we will go with the next step so write down this The next step is to check for shear. I think the step number is 5 to check for shear. check for shear. So what is the design shear force? So of course we are going to get the maximum shear at this section. So of course maximum bending moment and maximum shear we are going to get at the same section. Okay. Find out what is the reaction here. So that is going to be the maximum shear or design shear. Therefore maximum shear occurs at the support at the support that is V U D equal to so all loads get transferred to this 20 kilo Newton per meter multiplied by 4 so 20 multiplied by 4 plus so this value that is 1.725 plus 5.175 divided by 2 multiplied by length multiplied by the width 0.23. So V U D equal to V U D equal to 99.84 kilonewton. 99.84 kilonewton. That is the design shear force. So nominal shear stress, please open page number 72 of the code book. 
please open it. So page number 72 under 40.1. So that is 40.1.1. So it says, in the case of beams of varying depth, the equation shall be modified as. See, if you remember, in the case of rectangular beam, tau V equal to VU divided by BD, as given in 40.1. Okay. So there we had the constant area of cross section that, because that was a prismatic member. So in this case, what happens to the depth of the section? It changes from section to section. Okay. So, if that is the case, to find out the nominal shear stress, the formula we need to make use of is, if you look at 40.1.1, that is beams of varying depth, tau V equal to Vu plus or minus Mu divided by D tan beta divided by Bd. Okay. So, plus or minus, which one should we take? So, again, so B is the angle, I go further, tau V, Vu, B and D are the same as in 40.1. So, Mu is the bending moment at the section, we know what is that value, okay. So, beta is the angle between the top and the bottom edges. So, this is the bottom edge, this is the top edge. If you extend this, it goes like this and this becomes beta, okay. So this is parallel to this and this is the line cutting these two lines. So when this is beta, this should be beta as well because they are corresponding angles. So we need to find out what is beta. Once you know what is beta, tan beta can be known. So going further, in the second column, on the same page, the negative sign in the formula applies when the bending moment mu increases numerically in the same direction as the effective depth d increases. What it means is, so in the formula plus or minus, so we can put minus sign as the bending moment increases as the depth increases. Is it not? So if you take the bending moment here, it is zero, free end. If you look here, if you move like this, the depth also increases and also the bending moment increases. So in this case, what we need to do is in the formula, we need to take minus sign. Is it clear to you? So, we will write down that, that is nominal shear stress tau V shear stress tau V equal to tau V equal to V U D minus M U D divided by D tan beta tan beta divided by B times D. Okay. So in this case V U D is known 99.84 M U D is 183 kilonewton meter D is the effective depth at this support which is 562 millimeter. So what is tan beta? So you need to find out beta. Otherwise it is very easy. So tan beta is opposite side by adjacent side in this triangle. So this is 400 divided by 6, 4000. That is the length of the cantilever. So you are, you are going to get tan beta directly. So, from the figure, when I say from the figure, I am referring to this figure, tan beta 
equal to 400 divided by 4000. 4000 is 4 meter. That is equal to 0 0.10 tan beta. So by substituting all the values in this equation, therefore tau V equal to VUD is 99.84 multiplied by 1000. I am converting everything into Newton. And here MUD is 183 kilonewton meter, 10 to the power of 6 divided by D is 562 millimeter, tan beta is 0 0.10 divided by B is 230 into 562. The value is 0 0.52 newton per millimeter square. That is equal to 0 0.52 Newton per millimeter square. Again, if you go to page number 73, table 20, that should be less than tau C max. So, this is for M20 concrete. This is less than tau C max. What is tau C max? 2.8 Newton per millimeter square for M20 concrete. Therefore, no increase in the section is required or is required. Okay. Once that is done, Next step is to find out the shear capacity of concrete. Here we are not cranking any bars. So we are providing tension bars and we are providing concrete. That means shear is going to be taken care by the concrete and the stirrups. Is it clear to you? So. So, to find out design shear capacity of our design shear capacity, when I say shear capacity or design shear capacity, here it is one and the same design shear capacity of concrete. So, for that, the first thing I need to do is to find out the percentage of steel. Therefore, percentage of tension steel, percentage of tension steel equal to, so we are providing 4 bars of 20 millimeter dia, B is 230 multiplied by 562 is the effective depth multiplied by 100 that is equal to 0.97 percent tension steel. So we are providing 4 bars that is equal to 0.97 percent. So from table 19 for M20 concrete, so percentage of steel that is AST BD divided by 100 AST BD multiplied by 100 and the design shear strength of concrete. So for 0 0.97 falls between 0.75 and 1. So again if you look at table 19 for M20 concrete for 0.75 it is 0.56 and for 1% steel it is 0 0.62. So 0 0.75 is 0 0.56 Newton per millimeter square and for 1% steel, I do not need to write percentage, for 1% steel it is 0 0.62 Newton per millimeter square, ours is 0 0.97. So, what is the value? Therefore, 
tau c equal to that is the design shear strength of concrete is given by 0 0.56 plus 1 minus 0 0.75 0 0.97 minus 0 0.75 that is 0 0.62 minus 0 0.56 that is given by 0 0.61 Newton Newton per millimeter square. Okay. So if you look here, tau V, that is the nominal shear stress or the shear stress developed in this section due to the design load is 0 0.5 Newton per millimeter square. But what is the shear capacity of concrete? 0 0.61 Newton per millimeter square. That means if you multiply this, a, this value by BD, that is 230 multiplied by 562 and convert that value into kilonewton, that value is going to be greater than this. It means concrete itself is strong enough to take care of the shear, the entire shear. So theoretically speaking, we don't need any stirrups. However, the court says, the court says we have to provide certain minimum reinforcement. So going with this, this is greater than 0 0.52 Newton per millimeter square. Therefore, concrete is adequate Concrete is adequate to take care of shear. So if you want you can go one step further multiply 0.61 by area of cross section of the beam here which is 230 multiplied by 562 divide that value by 100 sorry 1000 to convert the value into kilonewton and compare that with this as I said or else you can do the check here itself and move further. So therefore concrete is adequate to take care of the shear however We shall provide stirrups, stirrups as specified in the code. So let us provide. Eight eight mm dia two legged stirrups two legged stirrups. Okay. So what is the spacing? So the spacing should not exceed the spacing of nominal shear nominal shear stirrups or stirrups should not exceed should not exceed 0 0.75 times d that is 0 0.75 times it is 562 that is equal to 4423 millimeter center to center and in no case it should exceed 300 millimeter 
center to center. This is as specified in the code on 26.5.1.5 and 26.5.1.6 on page 47 and 48. Okay. And also the spacing should not exceed SV equal to 0 0.87 FY ASV divided by 0 0.4B. So that is 0 0.87 into 415 into here area of cross section of the stirrups we are providing two legged stirrups 8 square divided by 0 0.4 multiplied by 230. So that is equal to 394 millimeter center to center. Okay. So we have three values. One is 423 millimeter center to center, 300 millimeter center to center, and 394 millimeter center to center. Okay. So take the least of these three values. That is 300 millimeter center to center. Therefore, we shall provide. We shall provide. 8 mm dia, 2 legged stirrups, 2 legged stirrups at 300 millimeter center to center. Okay. So there is little bit of this one uh, explanation we need. So we have to provide stirrups 300 millimeter center to center up to certain distance. Okay. After certain distance, what you can do is you have to reduce the spacing of stirrups. The reason is if you take this section, here the effective depth changes. Here it is 600 is overall depth. Say for example, here it is exactly in the middle that is at 4 meter. So the overall depth will be less than 600 and greater than 200. So it is going to be if I take this 400. So it is 200 plus 200 400. So exactly in the middle it is 400 is the overall depth. Okay minus the effective cover 38 that is equal to 362 millimeter is the effective depth here. Okay, when you consider the spacing of stirrups, again you need to follow the same here. Okay, 0.75 D. So 0.75 times 362 is 270. 300 should not cross, and it, sh it should not cross this 394. So 0.75 times D is. Uh, 362 that is 270 here 270 300 and 394 so beyond here beyond the middle you can decrease the spacing to say 272 millimeter center to center in other words you can decrease the spacing to 270 millimeter center to center and you can provide the same throughout is it clear to you so that part I am not doing, okay, just uh, keep in mind. So if you keep doing all these things in the examination, each and every small things, so the time will not be enough for you. So depending on how much marks allotted, so just, you know, make your decision and do the calculations required, okay, not beyond that. But when you are doing the design actually then you have to do a detailed design even if it takes some additional time okay and <coughs> next we are going to go with design check for deflection okay once the check for deflection is complete 
I'm going to go and uh, go with the detailed drawing, that is the reinforcement details. Okay? So we'll continue. Uh, coming to the next step, that is check for deflection. Check for deflection. So if you open page number 37 of the code book for a cantilever beam, so from class 23.2.1, page 37, for a cantilever, LE, that is the effective length of the cantilever divided by the effective depth, should not be greater than 7 multiplied by the modification factor. In other words, L e by d should be less than or at most equal to 7 multiplied by the modification factor due to tension steel. Okay. So when it comes to L e, effective length of, of cantilever L e in this case so what you must do is, if you go to page number 35, please go under 22.2c, page number 35, first column, if you go up for cantilever, it says the effective length of a cantilever shall be taken as its length to the face of the support plus half the effective depth except where it forms the end of a continuous beam where the length to the center of support shall be taken. So that is a whole paragraph, but what we need is, so the effective length of cantilever LE is as its length to the face of the support plus half the effective depth. Okay, is it clear to you? Even for bending moment, we should have taken that effective length instead of the clear length of 4 meter. But still, we, did, we just we compromised on that, but it's okay. So in this case, effective length LE equal to clear length, clear length plus half the effective depth. This is as per 22.2C page 35, 22.2C page 35. So LE equal to clear length is 4 meter. Okay, plus effective depth is 0.562 meter divided by 2. That is equal to 4.281 meter. Okay, therefore LE by D equal to 4.281. Effective depth is 562 millimeter or 0.562 meter. The value is given by seven point six two. Okay, let me call this as equation A. Okay, so when we check FT value, FT value multiplied by seven should be greater than seven point six two. So what is the next step? We need to find out what is 7 multiplied by Ft. For that you need to find out what is Ft. To find out modification factor Ft due to tension T due to tension steel. Okay. 
So again, if you go to page number 38, table 4, so for tension steel, modification factor, what are the values you need? You need Fs value. To find out Fs value, yes, the formula is given under the table itself. And also you need to find out what is the percentage of tension steel. Therefore, percentage of tension steel, percentage of tension steel, AST equal to, because we have four bars at this support, so that is 0.97%. We already calculated this value. Okay. So, and F S equal to 0 0.58 Fy, area of tension steel required, required divided by area of tension steel provided. So where did we get this value from? This is from table or figure 4 page 38. You already know this. Page 38. So 0 0.58 into 415 multiplied by area of tension steel required. That is 1127 divided by provided 4 bars of 20 millimeter diameter. So it is 1256.6. Therefore, Fs equal to, Fs value equal to 215.88 Newton. 88 Newton per millimeter square. Okay. So if you go to 4, figure 4 on page 38, figure 4 on page 38, for 0 0.97 percent tension steel and FST equal to 215.88. So 0.97, I'm going up, okay, 215 steel. So again, go horizontally. I'm going to get the value of FT, that is the modification factor due to tension steel equal to 1.15. Therefore, from figure 4, page 38 for 0 0.97 percent steel and Fs equal to 215.88 Newton per millimeter square, we get modification factor due to tension steel Ft equal to 1.15 okay so depending on how accurately you read or how well you read this value may vary a little bit so you don't have to worry about that little bit of variation so by substituting if I call this as equation 1 if I call this as equation B this is equation A and this is equation B the values of equation A and equation B in equation 1 we get we get
So, L e by D is 7.62, okay, and 7 multiplied by 1.15 that is equal to 8.05. So, that is 7.62 is less than 8.05. Therefore, deflection condition is generally satisfied. Okay? Is this clear to you? So, this completes the design problem. The next step is That is step 7 is reinforcement detail, reinforcement detail. Details. Write down this figure. Okay, and of course, if this is the support, even we are going to provide concrete on behind it as well. This is compression reinforcement. So, in this case, we do not have to worry about the development length for compression reinforcement. So, we only worry about the tension reinforcement. This is 4 meter or 4000 millimeter. Okay. So, the overall depth here. is 600 millimeter here the overall depth is 300 millimeter So, this is of course 200 millimeter, this is 400 millimeter, okay. So, as far as the stirrups are concerned, 
the stirrup spacing should not exceed as I said should not exceed 0.75 times D 300 millimeter and there is another formula so out of these three values we should take the least because the depth is varying here and we calculated the spacing of stirrups at this section where we have the maximum depth and we got the value of 300 millimeter center to center so what I do is I am going to provide 300 millimeter center to center up to certain point okay out of this 4 meter so afterwards I am going to decrease the spacing because it should not exceed 0.75 D similarly I am going to decrease the spacing of stirrups further so I am going to divide this, this into three parts if you want you can divide that into two parts because so practically speaking it is if it is 4 meter okay so dividing that into three parts so you may get 1.5 meter one side or 1 meter and another 1 meter or 1.5 meter the other part so if I take say 1.5 meter here that is 1500 millimeter okay so this depth is not 300 this is this depth is 200 plus this depth is going to be so I'm just I'm going to check roughly 2.5 meter this one 4 meter that is equal to this say y divided by this 0 0.4 0 0.4 therefore y equal to so it is 1 0 point 0.25 meter that is 0.414 so 0 0.25 meter so 0 0.25 meter and the total depth is here so 300 225 millimeter okay I am going to check the calculation once again this is y divided by 0 0.4 and this 2.5 divided by 4 so it is 1.2 this is 225 millimeter sorry 200 250 millimeter and 4 sorry this is 450 millimeter 450 millimeter okay 0.75 times of d is 337.5 millimeter so again the code says the spacing should not exceed 300 millimeter center to center so from here to here I'm going to provide stirrups at a spacing of 300 millimeter center to center okay for a distance of 1500 millimeter so if I take say another 1 meter or 1.5 meter say 1 meter this is not 1 meter sorry 1.5 meter I am going to take this is 1500 millimeter okay so this is this distance if I take this as y divided by 1 meter y divided by 0 0.4 it is 1 divided by 4 y equal to that is 0 0.1 meter that is equal to 100 millimeter so this is going to be this depth is going to be 300 millimeter okay so between this and this so the spacing should not exceed 300 millimeter and whatever given in the formula and 0.75 times d so 0.75 times d is this value you take lesser value you take not this depth instead this depth so that is going to be 225 millimeter center to center so for this length so I am going to provide 
8 mm dia 2 leg stirrups Eight mm dia two leg at two hundred two hundred twenty five millimeter center to center, and this is for a length of thousand five hundred millimeter. It is eight mm dia two leg at 300 millimeter center to center. So for the remaining 1 meter, so again 300 millimeter on whatever the value given in the formula and also take out of these two depths, take the lesser depth which is 200 millimeter 0.75 times D. Okay, so 0.75 times not total depth, sorry effective depth, here also we should have taken effective depth. Okay, 0.75 times the effective depth is going to be 190, 162 and 120 say here it is 125 millimeter center to center. So 8 mm dia, 2 leg stirrups. at it is say 150 millimeter center to center so one sorry 160 to 120 millimeter center to center so here also if it is if the depth is 450 effective depth is equal to 412 so this is 262 and uh, 0.75 times 262, this is 200 millimeter center to center. Okay. So, make sure that at any section, when you are providing stirrups, the spacing of stirrups should not exceed 0 0.75 times D, 300 millimeter center to center, and whatever the spacing given in the formula. Okay, so these are the details given. So if I take a section here, if I call this as section A, A, so what I am going to get is, so four bars, and two nominal bars of 12 mm diameter and these are the stirrups okay whenever you provide this hook so the hook should be provided in the compression zone not in the tension zone so for simply supported beams we used to give this hook at the top because the compression was on the top. Here in this case cantilever case. So the, wig, the hook should be in the bottom part because it is subjected to compression. So it is 4 of 20 mm dia bars. So this is Two of twelve mm dia compression steel nominal. Nominal. So this is eight mm dia two leg stirrups at three hundred millimeter center to center. I am writing three hundred millimeter center to center because I am taking the section here. So that is section AA. Okay, this is 230 millimeter is the width 
and the overall depth is 600 millimeter and the effective cover here is 38 millimeter okay so this is four of 20 mm dia this is two of 12 mm dia bars so this is section a a so if i take a section here i am going to call this as section b b so i am going to get like this okay so the width is 230 millimeter and the depth is total depth is 200 millimeter and i am going to continue with four bars and here four bars okay and two nominal bars this is section B, B, okay, four of twenty mm dia. This is two of twelve mm dia nominal. So here we are going to provide stirrups, eight mm dia stirrups. at at 200 sorry not this one 120 millimeter 8 mm they are two leg stirrups at 100 millimeter center to center and that is provided over a length of 1000 millimeter and the spacing will vary for this 1.5 meter that is 1500 millimeter and it will vary again for 1500 millimeter. So as we move towards the support the spacing of the syrup should increase so that all the codal recommendations are not violated. So you will have to be careful a little bit. Okay. So this completes this cantilever problem and also this completes the design of singly singly reinforced sections okay i am going to give two problems for you to practice please write down those two problems please write down this So one more thing I forgot to show you. So this may continue further and uh, this length should be at least equal to from here from the face not less than 840 millimeter. Okay, this length, the bar you should extend behind the support is going to be at least 840 millimeter. I hope this is complete. I am going to write down the problem for a sign for practice.
design a singly reinforced beam reinforced beam to carry a live load of 14.5 kilonewton per meter the clear span of the beam is 5.50 meter the bearing of each end each end is 300 millimeter Three hundred millimeter use M twenty concrete and F E four fifteen steel. Okay. So next problem is design a simply supported rectangular beam. millimeter wide to carry a live load of 26 kilonewton per meter the clear span of the beam is 4 meter The bearing at each end is three hundred millimeter. Use M twenty concrete. M twenty concrete and FE415 steel. So these are the two problems you can practice. So I'm going to discuss this problem briefly. So design a single reinforced, sing, singly reinforced beam to carry a live load of 14.5 kilonewton per meter. So the clear span of the beam is 5.50 meter. The bearing of each end is 300 millimeter. Use M20 concrete and FE415 steel. So if you look here, design a live load of 14.5 kilonewton per meter. So whatever load is given is the service load. To arrive at design load, what you must do is you must multiply this by a load factor. What is the value of the load factor? That is 1.5. Okay. So in addition to that, you need to include the self weight of the beam. So this problem does not say include the self weight or the self weight is already included. It does not say that. It means, so you must fix the dimensions of the beam. You must fix the width and the depth based on the thumb rule. Once you have it, so you calculate the value per meter length of the beam and multiply that value by the load factor so that value equal to 1.5 so to arrive at design load due to the self weight that is a dead design dead load design sorry design load due to dead load and 1.5 times 14.5 so you will have another number so add those two numbers 
Finally, you are going to get the design load. Okay, once you have the design load, so 5.5 meter is the clear span. So that is the distance between the faces of inner faces of the supports. Okay, that is the clear span. Then afterwards, bearing is 300 millimeter. That is 300 millimeter is the support width on each side. Okay. Then you need to find out what is the effective span. Effective span is lesser of the following two values. What are those following two values? Clear span plus half the width of the support that is 300 by 2 on one side plus half the width of the support on the other side. That is again 300 by 2. So that is one value. That is the distance between the centers of supports. One value plus clear span plus one effective depth whichever is smaller is going to be the effective span that is the effective span you are going to make use of to find out the design bending moment by using the formula w l square by 8 okay so as usual find out the reinforcement then then a check for deflection check for shear and finally show the reinforcement details and also you can do curtailment uh, curtailment of reinforcement because you are sitting at home and you can practice it Okay, uh, the next problem is design a simply supported rectangular beam 250 millimeter wide. So here the width of the beam is fixed. It is given. You cannot change it. You have to maintain it. But in this, in the first problem, you have the flexibility of changing the width. Wide to carry a live load of 26 kilo newton per meter. Again, to carry a live load means it is the service load. Okay. So you must multiply this value by 1.5 to arrive at the design load, design live load. Okay. The clear span of the beam is 4 meter. Again, that is a clear span. And the support width is 300 millimeter on each side. Of course, use M20 concrete and FE415 steel. Here also you need to fix the dimensions of the beam. So when you are fixing the dimensions of the beam, one of the dimensions is already given. That is 200 millimeter, 250 millimeter width. The only thing you need to do is find out the effective depth and also after giving the effective cover to it, find out what is the total depth. Once you know the cross section details, you can always find out what is the dead load or the self weight of the beam. So once you have the self weight of the beam, you are going to multiply that value by 1.5 to arrive at the design load due to the self weight. So add that number to 1.5 times 26 and finally you are going to get the design load and design, continue with the design. Okay. So please practice these two problems and that makes you confident. Okay. And thank you very much.